Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast for Ray of Light Part 2. Tonight's episode was not the best for me. Um, not as good as the past couple weeks. We've had, you know, some incredible episodes, but that's not to say that tonight was a bad episode by any means. There were still a lot of great moments, but to me, it just felt a bit lacking. Um, I did like the therapy session with Katie. You know, we had a lot of good continuity with that, talking about, you know, a lot of her big storylines from the past. Um, you know, the whole thing with Katie, I mean, at the end, she is kind of back on the whole soccer thing. Um, you know, some interactions with Maya. We see that Maya is doing, you know, a lot better. Um, you know, I don't know if, I mean, I know Maya is definitely a different person. You know, she deals with things in her own way and everything. Um, but I feel like, you know, she would still be sort of sad. And I mean, I'm not saying necessarily, you know, crying in a corner somewhere, but I don't know, just maybe they moved a little fast with the Maya thing, but then again, you know, maybe not, you know, but with Katie, I do like that she's back on the whole soccer thing. Her and Jake are sort of you know, moving into a better position. So, I mean, overall, the Katie stuff, you know, it's good. It's nothing overly exciting or thrilling. Um, but I do like the way, you know, they're sort of go- coming full circle and, you know, with Katie. And, and, and overall, it is definitely, you know, good. The stuff with Jenna and Connor, uh, really loving that. Very awkward, very funny, but, you know, just great. I love when the show pairs together, too characters who you normally would not, you know, suspect or who have not had, you know, a lot of scenes or intimate, you know, scenes together. Um, it just, it creates new dynamics and they're often, you know, risks, but they do pay off. Um, I think the Jenna and Connor stuff is great. You know, Connor sort of with his, you know, confusion with girls slash, you know, his Asperger's and just being that awkward person he is, you know, um, you know, punching, uh, Luke was, you know, an unsuspecting, you know, shocking, funny, kind of sad, but, you know, just a great moment. And the ending, you know, Jenna and Connor, um, Jenna telling him, you know, they, she still wants to be with him, they're gonna date and all that, so, you know, I'm definitely looking forward to see, uh, where that's gonna go. Now, of course, the big stuff in this episode was with Eli, you know, the, the nude Eli scene, um, you know, it was so over-publicized. It was, I think, one of the most promoted and highlighted moments by far of this season, and probably in Degrassi history. It was, like, literally in every single promo, all the time, everywhere, you know, and, um, I mean, you know, the moment would have been more, I guess, shocking or interesting, you know, if we hadn't seen it 18 times, you know, before tonight, and that's why the whole thing is just not, you know, the most exciting or, you know, good plot, because we already knew, you know, what was happening. Um, that's the case, not of the show being poor, but of the pro- the promos, you know, essentially ruining parts of the show, but, you know, it, it's a very hard thing to manage, because, of course, they want to be able to get, you know, viewers watching, you know, but they don't want to give away too much, so, it, you know, it's a delicate balance, but I gotta say, the scene... Uh, with Bullfrog and Mr. Simpson and Eli was uh, absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, Mr. Simpson talking about how when, you know, he was a kid, how he found the body of a student. You know, for those of you who have watched the original series, you know that that actually did happen. And that was, you know, the only other big, you know, suicide on Degrassi in the entire, you know, 30, you know, years that the show has been on. So, I mean, it was very great to see Eli just his all his emotions in that scene, talking about how it could have been him, and just, you know, him hugging Bullfrog, and of course, Mr. Simpson's speech. Great stuff right there. Um, you know, other little things in the episode, the garden scene, everyone having fun and breaking, you know, the, um, the barricade and punching it. It was nice to see, you know, a fun, lighter moment in episodes that have been so dark. Um... And of course the tribute video. I love the tribute video just in general because it's kind of like a highlights reel of this past season, you know, and it's just really cool to see that. Um, in regards to next week, I mean, it looks pretty great. You know, Fiona uh, kind of addicted to the whole tweeting thing and getting, you know, uh, a stalker. You know, we've had 
online predators and stuff in the past. I mean, the very first episode of The New Generation, you know, involved Emma and Jordan, you know, an online boyfriend. And, you know, the thing about Degrassi, the way that it is able to still stay on the air and to, you know, still thrive year after year is that, you know, while they may still do plots that have been done before, sometimes several times, they always find a way to revamp it and make it as current as possible, and incorporating Twitter into that, which, you know, every Degrassi fan knows how essential and important, you know, Twitter is, and just to see them incorporate that into the show is, you know, a fantastic thing, and I mean, I had no idea about any of this stuff with Fiona, you know, I, like I said, I have not been reading any spoilers, you know, at all, and just been in the dark, so I'm really looking forward to that, you know, it's been a while since we've had a good, you know, Fiona plot, and tonight, kind of like a warm-up, you know, we had some more Fiona, and her scenes with, uh, Eli were great as well, I love, uh, the two of them together, so I'm very, look, um, very much looking forward to next week. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening, I hope you all enjoyed the podcast, and I will talk to you all next week.